Sweet. All right, guys. This is a special day. Uh, we're going to dive into some very, very rare Pokemon cards. Specifically, the <laughs> Gold Star set. We have Joe nice. from DA Car World who has delivered, hand delivered the PSA 10 Gold Star Pokemon set. And I'm um, so honored to have PokeRev. Randolph, Pokey Radar, Rhyme Style joining me so we could dive in and learn about these incredible, very rare Pokemon cards. I mean, honestly, when I think about like what uh, the cards I want to collect, I want to I want to know what the most rare ones are, what the ones people um, want, what the ones people are sleeping on that might be next, like like the Lugia that's that's like crazy popular right now. <laughs> what is the next? sought after cards you know is it the gold star set i i really feel like i really feel like it is because it's it's so rare and it's so exciting that's one of the reasons in my why opinion most... i would say the gold star is the most beautiful looking cards in the hobby by far because they just pop yeah. out at you which is what's crazy about them that was the first time they did that as well right like nowadays we're used to all these v's v maxes everything's mm -hmm. like breaking out the card but back then uh, it was it's completely new like more specifically, they're referring to how the gold stars all break the frame. Like the cut, the art does doesn't cut off at the at, at the border. They're all every single one of them is bursting out through the edges. Mm -hmm. It was actually the same artist that uh, drew all of these gold stars, uh, Masakazu Fukuda. All shiny too, right? Like I, I, the, yep. the one thing that people love the most with Pokemon in the video games as well is is the shiny Pokemon, the rare Pokemon. You know, so the fact that they're in the card as well. And they're breaking out, and they got the star symbol. Correct me if I'm wrong, here, but these were the first shiny cards. Like, I know the Neo Destiny cards were technically shinies, but you couldn't really tell because they're all basically had the silver cards for the Pokemon themselves. But these were the very first shinies actually released, right? No, the, I think the Neo I guess, Shinings were, like, because the Gyarados is red and, like, the Charizard. Oh, right, Charizard. right, right. The Gyarados and the Magic card. But after that, this is, like, the, the first that yeah. revealed yeah. more. Yeah, like this was the big the big chase because this was also right when uh, Nintendo and Pokemon took this back from Wizards mm -hmm. of the Coast, so they wanted to do something new and different. So I mean, like these things are just crazy different because it's what you can only get a uh, one Pokemon Gold Star in your whole deck. So you like not even like I yeah. Think what like let's talk about that. So in a let's say in a box we talked about this before in a box of X Deoxys, you could only get. Like the chance of getting a gold star in a box is was one in basically one in two. It's, there so was it's a gold 50%. star every seventy two packs. So theoretically, if you cracked a whole case, you'd get three gold stars. So that's like that's also one of the reasons why these are so hard. Like most people don't know about these just because they're that rare. Uh, well, let, let's dig into them. Like let's start out with uh, the dogs, or let's start out with one of them. Yeah, dogs and or cats. I'm not. I always called them the dogs. Somebody else called them the cats. And, like, I don't know. Uh, they're not really all dogs. Yeah. I just call them beasts. Yeah. yeah. Like, Entei the looks the most dog like. Cats. Raikou's the most cat like. And the sweet <laughs> yeah. is like right in the middle, is my opinion. Like, and those guys are the dogs, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, if, if, you, if, if somebody looks at that Raikou and goes, that's a dog, like, they're wrong. But. Now, the funny thing about the, the legendary dogs, cats, beasts, whatever you call them, there's actually history behind that. Radar, do you want to, like, go into that? Yeah. So, um,. Obviously, with the Gold Stars, we talked about this, and, and I think Rev can share more on the rarity of these boxes. He's kind of the box king. But when it comes specifically to the Gold Stars, you know, there was, like we said, one in every two boxes. Mm -hmm. And there was an unfortunate event back in, like, 2015. We found somebody in the Netherlands who had roughly, ah, gosh, two, 300 <laughs> copies of each Gold Star dog, Ente, Suikun, and Raikou. Uh, there was a video posted on YouTube just flipping <laughs> through a full binder's full. I mean, beautiful binder. Fantastic. It's very but, nice to look at, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but it kind of destroyed the the, the rarity behind those specific gold stars uh, and put a little a little uh, taint on, 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 on their name. So for the English gold star dogs, uh, there's a much higher pop. You can see the pop report, the pop. And tens are about two, three hundred for each of them, comparatively to, you know, fifty or so on the other ones. So, uh, yeah, just be careful when you're when you're buying these guys. There's a lot more available, um, although they are very, very popular Pokemon still. 
they they still gone up in value a lot over the course of the last couple of years. Because I remember even two years ago they were worth like next to nothing, but now they're already over four figures each, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. The thing is, even though it is like yeah. two hundred to three hundred per per beast, that's still technically low considering that there's millions of people out there that you know will want to collect these. Yeah. And that's yeah, what makes the other ghosts are so rare because it's like if what's the pop report on like the Mewtwo actually Torchic is the lowest one. It's like when so yeah. little exists, people are gonna want to do anything it takes to get those cards, which is what caused the value to go up so much. I think we'll see a lot of supply clear out, especially right now with what's going on <laughs> Pokemon. It's like they're here, but and then yeah, they'll be gone. Like I really feel like they'll and then everybody will be like, Oh, remember when, when we could have got all those those gold star <laughs> dogs when they were just sitting there? I just yep. really feel like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because you can't beat the artwork on them. All right, let's move on. All right, so next, sticking with legendary trios, we're hopping into Legend Maker for the Reggie Gold Star Trio. Reg Ice, Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel. These uh, also are shiny, but you know most people don't look at these legendaries that often. Like, Reggie Steel's got the most stark difference between normal and shiny in that it's green instead of silver, but... I mean, the ice is a slightly different color of ice, and the rock is a slightly different color of rock, so it's it's not as striking. Same with the uh, the dogs. The coloration's not huge and stark. There are some where it's crazy and sticks out immediately noticeable. So in a Legend Maker box, what are the hits besides the gold stars? Um, there's, there's a Mew in there. Yeah, that Mew is nice. Yeah, that, that's the, the secret rare Mew, right? Like it's I think it's 10 or 90. Three out of ninety-two, is that? Yep. Or am I thinking of a different set with the secret rare? That, the the secret rare is Pikachu for Legend Maker. The Mew is a regular hollow. Oh, right. But I actually it, got yeah. one of the Japanese ones signed by the artist during that uh, trip in Dallas, that regional in Dallas. So there's a signed Reggie Rock by the artist of the Gold Stars. I think one of the biggest things with with the Gold Stars too that we have to think about now is that just say. You wanted to collect the entire set, and you wanted to do it by the craziest way possible, opening up packs and boxes, like we said earlier. Like the cost to go on that journey is millions of yeah. dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, just like insane. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's like if all you find a box. That's if you just, find yeah. a box. <laughs> Say you wanted to get a ten set, and you wanted to do it the old-fashioned way, just go hunting. Like that is what we're at to at this time. Like you literally. The cost to do it would be just mind blowing. Yeah, and you have to get you can't the tech, do it. And you on just, top of that, to get them intense, it just doesn't. It's make almost sense. impossible. Yeah, it's, it's like no one's gonna do that. Like Ryan said, to find the boxes too. There's yeah, that exactly. one guy offering a uh, 100k on a Deoxys box right now, and he's not coming up with a Deoxys box. So like, and that there's three in Deoxys, so you need theoretically six boxes of Deoxys to just hit all three of these, <laughs> and they might ten. not even be ten. <laughs> yeah. It might be nine. So yeah, like, that's the scary so Deoxys. <laughs> that's insane. Just to maybe have a shot. Right, and, and from yeah. an investment standpoint, you know, we talk about set cards have only one direction, and that's to go up. These ones, like you said, people aren't going to be opening these boxes chasing those cards. So no. those those pops are going to be pretty pretty snagged. What are, what are the pops on the Legend Makers, uh, the Registeel, Regis, and the Reggie Rock? So like, Reggie Ice, you know? like 44 pop. Reggie Rock seventy seven and Reggie Steel sixty four. So that's still like that's wow. still, crazy. Still, really, really, still crazy low. Yeah, forty four uh, pop on the Reggie Rock. Ice no oh, Reggie Ice forty four. Reggie, Reggie Rock seventy seven, and then yeah Reggie Steel sixty four. Wow, so. that's low pop. That is that is very low pop. I think I was thinking of the evolutions when I was that's like insane. under two hundred. I mean, smart. That's what I I really. I really care about is the pop and, the, and how hard it is to pull these cards, you know. All right, so we went through the uh, unseen forces. Now the legend maker. So chase next cards. up, we got the Power Keepers Evolutions Trio: Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon. I personally think the Evolutions are the most slept on. Not the Umbreon yeah. Espion, obviously those are the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody wants those, but between Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon, I think they're like one of the most beautiful looking ones. Well, that's that's tough to say too because. Uh... You know, there's a, a lot more different print runs for those cards in, mm -hmm. in Japan, actually. So, you know, we'll, we'll get into it with the Umbreon and Espeon yep. later, but they, they released the play promo series of all evolutions. And then on top of that, the uh, Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon got released in a separate um, uh, promo as well. So there's mm -hmm. more availability for that specific artwork amongst the different languages. Uh, just in general, though, so... The Torchic 
the, do you guys know is that the lowest population for gold stars in yeah. a 10 at, at yeah, 16 16 mm-hmm. so 16 pop so realistically yeah there could only be theoretically 16 complete psa 10 sets which obviously there's not yeah. that many so it's got to be like under 10 probably i'd assume or around right. there <laughs> right yeah is that <laughs> so there's like, one right in front of us so that's yeah. that that eats up one there's one <laughs> at least one yeah, and then and then the very first person that completed this set in the PSA registry sold it in 2017 uh, on eBay uh, through PWCC. So that's dispersed. That was a set that was broken up. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing too is that when you do sell it like that, like there's the one that's happening right now. There's not one buyer buying the whole set. Right. You know, it's, it's like, hard to yes. Yeah. Like, even I if mean, you afford it, it's hard to yeah. win that. It's good. <laughs> The other crazy thing, Radar, you mentioned that the person that sold it, they sold it to buy like a car. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, and it's like, if you look at the value, and again, this is the thing about Pokemon. You know, people always ask me like, oh, what are you going to sell this? Are you going to sell that? It's like, well, I mean, I could. But like, if you look at the differences in growth, especially like as years pass, it's it's crazy. Do you know what that sold for originally? All of them? Uh, you know, I don't. You know, but it's probably it, nowhere near what it is today. <laughs> oh, no, not even close. I mean, you know, th- things come up in people's lives and, and you have your own goals. So, you right. know, that he, he, he achieved that True, goal, yeah. sold mm-hmm. that set, got what he wanted. And, um, you know, it, it, it came with great success. You know, obviously, right, right. We, we all look back and want to keep everything we sold. But, uh, yeah, it's a painful, painful thing to look back on. I yeah. remember that now. Yeah. yeah. I remember that now. The auction closed prices, I think. Uh, and... I feel like I looked them up pretty recently, and I don't think anything cracked five figures. Like I, I think this set in total, when it last sold, was like still in the five figures. I don't know if the whole set cracked six. Like it might have just by like, virtue like twenty seven, but like like eighty grand it was probably the, for the yeah. For I mean, five. like these things were going for like two, three hundred, right? Some of them, right, like, right, right. Does anyone know what a Mewtwo cost today? What was the most recent sale? A couple grand. <laughs> It's like five or seven, I think, some, yeah. something in that range. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I, I sold that card. I had that card, and I sold that for like three hundred. <laughs> okay, so the irony is, is, this is this is what got 10, me yeah. really into Pokemon cards back in twenty seventeen when I really came back. Because when I really like looked, because I, I came back because of evolutions. But as I started like mm. looking around, what else came out? I came across Mewtwo, and I'm like, I, I want it. I want the, I want all of them. I want them all. And this is actually what spiraled me into basically. <laughs> how I started collecting what I got today. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I remember I was I was on eBay when I first kind of came back as well, 2016. I found a seller selling that Mewtwo right there and a Trico together. So Trico Gold Star, Mewtwo Gold Star in a, in a bundle. It was like 95 pounds, so probably oh like 120, 130 dollars. And I was like, people kept telling me you can't buy cards on eBay and just grade them and come back 10. It's not it's not really heard of. But I graded those two. The Mewtwo came back a 10. The Trico came back a, a nine. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, I paid £100 for this. It's, I, I, was, I was younger at this point as well. I paid £100 for this. It comes back. It's now worth 300 I'm like, I've just made $200. So I sell it, <laughs> flip it. And I'm like, you know, I don't want that, man. I want, I want to collect Watsy. I want, I want to get Watsy, man. I don't want gold stars. What the hell? And then, uh, yeah, now I want this card back, you know? I want the card back. But that's a good point as well. I think many people who came back into Pokemon and got into the grading aspect, everyone was chasing Watsy. Yep. Even though gold stars are like incredibly rare. We, we know this now. Back then, people would like same with the EX cards. People would like turn their nose at them because they want Watsy. They only want Wizards yep. of the Coast. When actually, outside of that, not only is the rarity, it's a lot harder to find these cards. Um, they're actually still beautiful cards, and people are starting to realize that now. <laughs> uh, and in some cases, it's a little bit too late. But um, but as in Pokemon, it's never too late because in three years, we're saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I look at you guys going, damn, man. I wish I, I wish I got into this like three, four years ago, five years ago. But it is what it is, you know. You get in when you get in, and try to find the value in, from yeah. from what you can get, you know. And uh, it's, mm-hmm. but they these these cards are soaring. They're like just flying, yeah. literally flying up. Uh, but this I'm actually, glad I was able to get this one. This is actually also a good point. People always ask me, it's like, you know, is it too late to get into Pokemon? The answer is no. Because the thing is, yes, yeah, some of these older cards are pretty much out of reach with how expensive they get but there's also lower grades you know you don't need to get a 10 you don't need to get mm-hmm. the shinings or the watsy cards and even like modern day cards are beautiful like the shiny Charizard yeah. that came out in champion spot that's like a six dollar pack is beautiful and that card 10 years from now is probably going to be what these cards are today so it's like it's never too late you know look at look at modern stuff look at the stuff that came out a couple of you know years ago even prime pokemon cards L level mm-hmm. X's. There's a lot of stuff out there that people haven't really even like jumped into. That's why we're going over this. This is like 
These are, are the cards that later became the level X's, the prime cards, and what will become the EX cards, the, the V Maxes of, of today's era. Yeah, these, these came out in what, around the 2005 time frame. So mm -hmm. think about what kids, what age they were at cl collecting that set, collecting gold stars at that time. How old are they now? What type of income are they bringing in? When is that going to hit its peak? So mm -hmm. it's a kind of this forever non-ending cycle of uh, yeah and, of and, and there, yeah there are still some out there that aren't graded as well we, we always assume that surely everyone's graded these cards but you'll have kids now like you say like reaching their 20s now um who have these in binders so right, like, right. because of videos like this because of content like this people will flip through their binders and see oh wait i've got a gold star torchic and that could it could be a 10 you know it could mm -hmm. be a 10 you just don't know and you got um, rep so, cracking you know, boxes <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <right. laughs> exactly next up we got pop series five the Umbreon and Espeon. These oh. are very notable. Oh, no. <laughs> They're not hollow. I would like to just say we Give me that got Umbreon. cheated. Because the, the Japanese version of these were holographic, and we got the non-hollow versions. Uh, yeah. Radar, are you, if you want to like go over the uh, the lottery system with it. Yeah. So I, I recently, uh, I, I may have affected the market on these guys. Um, I picked up the, the Japanese version of the Umbreon. Now... The Umbreon and Espeon are, are very, very special, extremely rare cards in Japan. They were released in the uh, the Play Promo fan club back in Japan, and you had to hit like a ridiculous amount of fan club points in order to get these cards, mm -hmm. like a stupid amount, something that you had to go to an event almost every day. It was insane. Um, I mean, just, just pop reports in total for these two cards. I think there's 26 Umbreons in the PSA pop in total. Mm -hmm. and 29 yeah the japanese ones um so the umbreon espion uh, in english being released in, in the pop series again have their own unique release in in the u.s as well but uh i mean just just for scale these the japanese version are some of the rarest cards i sold a beckett nine umbreon for forty thousand dollars a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago um but the the english versions yeah, they're not hollow, but they're they're very hard to get as well coming out of the, the Pop 5 series. What's, what's the uh, Pop reports on these guys? Uh, for the Umbreon and Espeon in, in PSA 10, we have 54 on the Espeon and 50 on the Umbreon. The other thing that's crazy wow. about the Pop Series 5 packs is because they are not hollow, you you know how weighing obviously is a big issue in the, in the hobby. Uh, Pop Series packs, since they're both not hollow, you can't weigh it. And that's why they like the most expensive mm. packs to get for the Pop Series. Because it, it's a huge gamble. Either you're about to uh, spend a couple hundred dollars and get two comments, or you might strike gold <laughs> and get a Umbreon or Espeon. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 50 Pop. That's uh, that's crazy. You think that it would be yeah, a higher yeah. Pop because it's a non-hollow, which they don't have to, you don't have to worry about, like, hollow damage, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the, the pull rate, Rev, you might know better than I do. For those pop five gold stars was one in fifty packs, seventy five packs. Yeah, I was gonna say like one between one and fifty to one hundred. I can't remember, but yeah, it, it's they're they're tough to pull because you have to open up those pop series packs. And <laughs> what's the cost of a pop series now? Like, I can't imagine. As somebody yeah. who's open yeah, pop years, so like you have to be ready to like lose everything opening those packs. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> like, no, I I think I'm you open. Can't, you get nothing else really. Right now, I'm looking at packs. Uh, they're going for. And again, this is just what's listed on eBay. They're going for roughly about three fifty to four hundred a pack. And again, you can open those and just get two comments. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, there, there's a cult following for evolutions. I mean, some people purely collect evolution cards, so that's that's another reason why they're so popular and so valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially these two as well. Like Gen mm -hmm. Two is a is a game where you know it's close to a lot of people's hearts, and these two Pokemon are not only evolutions; they're also just beautiful Pokemon anyway. Espeon, uh, Umbreon. Especially the shiny version as well, you know. I mean, full, full yeah, disclosure, sure. I did just buy a Japanese play promo Espeon, but those two cards with the hollow is, mm. they're insane. They're on a whole other level. Yeah, we got like, Sheila the hollow one. I think potentially the most like the most expensive non-hollow, well, definitely up there with the most pricey non-hollows out there, right? Yeah, what is the price on those things? So these are worth a, pretty safely about 10x everything that we've shown so far. Uh, not added together, but these right. are... I don't think these have sold for under 15k in wow. the past like several months. I think they're a little bit closer to like 20k each right now. Like it's crazy. 20k for a non-hollow, yeah. but it's low pop. 
But if you got to open seventy five four hundred dollar packs to hit one, that's thirty grand. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I opened Pop Series packs yesterday, so you get two cards, right? So this was like one of the packs. Okay. So, <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. the Arwigs. I'm not gonna lie, the Ensei Arwigs is actually sick, but like that's, that's what you can expect when you open like literally yeah. just two cards like that. Right. You have to, and on top of it, the one other thing that people don't talk about often is that the Pop Series packs, since there's only two cards in them, literally just picking the pack up and holding your finger on it a little too hard, you can Damage just yeah. dent wow. the card. Because they're that thin, they're like wow. literally paper thin. So even mm-hmm. before you even get the pack, this they probably they could be mishandled. Yeah. Distributing know? it like when they're handing them out. Yeah. There you go. Oh my yeah. Finger just crushed down to a yeah. six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those th- those were just shipped in huge distrib- uh, distributor boxes. Yeah. They weren't in a booster box with any extra protection. So that's why the like pop. The that's why the pop uh, the the pop report on it for PSA ten is so low. You know, it's probably mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just difficult to get a clean, you know, pristine card. Out of that pack, mm-hmm. yeah. Plus, like even opening the pack itself sometimes difficult. Like I mean, I've had to open a number of packs, and uh, you know, I always turn into like ham fisted goofball that I you know get nervous. <laughs> oh, that's the like, worst. Oh, when you no. ruin your own cards. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes they just like turn to shreds, packs, and you're like, oh no, I'm yeah. bending the card. This is the worst. <laughs> sure. All right, we got next up Crystal Guardians. This one's a little bit different in that there's only two gold stars in this set. There's uh, Celebi and Alakazam. Every other other ones besides the pop series have had uh, three so far. Yeah, these are nice. Yeah. I'm more of Celebi. a Celebi. I'm more of a Celebi guy. What Celebi you, what, so good, man. What do you guys? What do you guys more Celebi or Alakazam? Celebi so all the way. I like the art for Alakazam more, but I would much rather have the Celebi. Because yeah. I, I mean, feel like rat- with, with Celebi, Celebi pops the least amount than any of the gold stars. I don't know what it is. Something about him just. I'd rather have a different angle, if that makes sense. I mean, Rev, Rev, one of your best friends has uh, probably one of the greatest Celebi Gold Star collections out there. Probably in the world, right? <laughs> probably. He wasn't even trying. He just was picking them up because he loved the artwork. So, Cool Trainer Ryan, uh, he has, like, a binder of them that he picked up over the years. Like, literally, he'll just be like, buy it now. And he was buying them, and, they're, you know, they were just sitting there. Nobody, yeah. nobody wanted them. And he just acquired over time like this massive binder of just gold star Celebes, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna send them all in and get them all graded one day, and I'm just like, sure you are. <laughs> There's no way you're letting those out of your sight. <laughs> he's like, go to sleep with them, holds the binder like this. <laughs> yeah. What's the pop? Yeah, kind of, what's the pop report on these guys? Celebi, we're looking at 81. Alakazam, 64. Wow, Alakazam's got less. The coloration. Okay, on this Celebi. is still. This is still the crazy part to me because, like, most of these gold stars are in the double digits. Again, keep in mind, there's millions of collectors out there. They're going to want these. Millions. Yeah. If you're talking about a card that's available in the double digits, you're going to have to fight, fight for it. it. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And, I mean, I wonder how many more are going to go to grade that's going to increase the pop, too. It's probably not much mm-hmm. to get it to a PSA mm-hmm. 10. That's what's so exciting about mm-hmm. the gold star set for me is that if, if it's that rare, we have to open, like, on the x you have to open two boxes to maybe get one gold star it's Actually, just red. crazy yeah. you, just to opened, me. you just opened a couple of ex series boxes in the last couple months i think rev pulled yeah. this one didn't he yeah he pulled yeah mm-hmm. i saw that one dragon frontiers yep and then y'all open another box and it's like nope nothing <laughs> it's been every other it seems like see, legend mm-hmm. maker was like i think it was red rock and see that's like, the crazy then, part to me with ex series boxes it's like the real chase cards are the gold stars like all the other EXs in the series are sure that they might be worth a couple of bucks, but like when you look at the overall prices for these boxes, we're talking about again. Uh, I think Joe mentioned EX Deoxys box. You're gonna offer like a hundred grand. All you want is this. You want the Latios and Latias, and if you end up opening and get holographic Mac cargos, you're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely not getting your investment back. Yeah, there, there's some like consolation prizes to be had in that like the original EX Pokemon are like also in there. But I mean, it's it's mm. a real south of the uh, south of the gold stars. The X Delta species, Metagross, nice Kyogre, and the. I love that Groudon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's one of my sick. favorites in that set. The Golden Boy. What's yep. the uh, what's the pops on these on the Delta species? Uh, Groudon, 59. Uh, Kyogre, 60. Metagross, 44. Now, that, that might be a clear example of Metagross just being a less popular of the three, and that's why mm-hmm. there's less 10s. Yeah. Uh, but 
that also helps it out on the on the price point being a little yeah. pop. Now we get to get into some slightly extra interesting stuff. The whole on phantoms. Oh, this where, is, as you I may notice, this, I love this, this the Gyarados is fire type, which is if you play the game, not something he does. He is water flying. <laughs> Yep. But because his shiny's red, they were like, this red card should be a red card. So they made it fire type and one of the Delta species. Yeah, I mean, it works. <laughs> it looks sick. Same with the Mew, right? Like the, the, the blue on the Mew with, mm-hmm. the, with the water type is just too nice. Yeah, the Gyarados is the lowest top um, of the three. Um, oh, the Pikachu is so sick. Arms crossed. Mm. For Gyarados. You, you pull Ghostar yeah. from Hollow Phantoms, any of, them, uh, uh, any of them are good. Like, they're just yeah. amazing. So with every gold star, it's like it's it's like a one out of every two boxes you're gonna get one yeah. gold star. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's yeah. Hall of Phantoms or Dragon yeah. Frontiers or yeah. Theoretically, if you got a whole case of uh, Hold on Phantoms, you can crack all three of those. Like Crystal Guardians, you're helped a little bit in that there's only two and it's still one in seventy two packs. So you only need to theoretically open four boxes to get you know all four of your, boxes right uh, four instead of six. But when you know you're talking. At least twenty grand a box, you know that you say. Like a what Poker was saying, it's like millions of dollars to to actually do the yeah. old fashioned way of yeah. pulling these uh, gold stars and then getting PSA tens. I was going to say it's weird that the Gyarados is so low compared to Mewtwo and Pikachu. I don't know if it was playable back then. That might have been a reason. Thirty one on Gyarados, one hundred two on Mewtwo, and ninety five on Pikachu. So a huge That's difference weird. on those. But oh, Pikachu, Pikachu is Pikachu, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to get this right. graded a lot more. Right. I think it's just a popularity thing. And even though Gar- Gyarados ha- ha- is a fan favorite, I feel, feel like people prefer to Pikachu and a Mewtwo way more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. I know in the Japanese they have the, uh, there was that promo lunch pail or whatever that comes with Mewtwo Gold Star and Pikachu Gold Star, and not yeah. the Gyarados Gold Star. So in Japanese printings, there's a lot more supply on those two. One thing... We didn't hit on, but we're all aware of it here, is that during the EX era, Pokemon was at such a low time, right? So it's like, it's nothing yeah. like it was now. Like, they were just, you know, riding the wave of, like, base, like, fossil, jungle, all this stuff. And then, like, it just sl- started to slope and slope and down. And EX era was just like, it's just like there's no pulse, right? And, and they didn't yeah. print barely any of it. But when we look at it now, we look at EX era, we're like, oh, my gosh, like, this artwork is amazing. Like, it's just such like the chase is there for the gold stars so everybody's trying to yep. get this stuff and they didn't print it like you know they're not printing it like they they do now like with with all these newer sets on top of that yep. so it's just the rarity's there everything's there the artwork so so at da card world we have our invoice history all the way back then so i can see what we were selling boxes for back in the day oh, and no. uh do you want to guess how many like to, to segue because I, I only know this number off the top of my head you want to guess how many Neo Destiny first boxes we sold at like just the regular price when they came out? Zero. <laughs> Couldn't sell a box. We had to pack them all out. <laughs> like, oh my god! It's insane. <laughs> to look, like I look, I pulled up wow. the invoices. I was like, "What happened? How is there nothing? We had to turn them all into packs. This is absurd." All right, let's get into Team Rocket Returns. The Mudkip, yeah, Torchic, Trico. Where the the Trico and the Mudkip are, you know, in their own sort of category, and then the Torchic is in its entirely separate category. Uh-huh. In that the Torchic is by far the well, not by far, but like the lowest pop. It's pop sixteen for PSA ten. I think uh, one of the other dragons is like pop twenty or twenty four, so it's like kind of close. But like everything else, cute I think the little low- guy, what a cute little dude. Yeah. This is like half <laughs> the pop of the next lowest pop thing we've talked about so far. Wow. I was going to say, I also personally think EX Team Rocket Returns was one of the best EX3 sets because you had a bunch of hits inside there. You had the, the Mewtwo, yeah. I believe. They also had like Articuno and stuff like that. So like, if you got an EX Team Rocket Returns box, you're not just also only looking for, for gold stars. You also got some good EX3s in, in the set as well. Yeah, good point, yeah. I mean, I just opened that set two weeks ago and, you know, with the odds, right? Open the box, no gold star inside, but you got all those really, really cool artworks yeah. and hollows and everything, like you said, but the, the hunt for the gold stars... Yeah, it was a, a direct like sequel to the Watsy Team Rocket set. It's Team mm. Rocket Returns. So they, they brought back the dark Pokemon into the Nintendo era. So it has that really cool nostalgic attachment for those Watsy collectors. 
Yeah, and even even like you found Rev in these boxes, the reverse hollows as well, like in every pack, like it's, they're so beautiful as well. So I mean, these these are some of the most fun boxes to open. They're just so expensive, uh, <laughs> and so yeah. I love them. Mm -hmm. I forgot there was the Here Comes Team Rocket uh, secret rare in the set. Yeah, pull that, and I was like, oh, dude, like what a throwback, right? Like the OG <laughs> exactly, yeah. Jesse James. Looking at the value of this Torchic right now, it's it's really an arbitrary number because it's that one card that most gold star collectors need to complete their set you know we haven't seen one of these sell in a long time and we finally have one up on ebay already at fifteen thousand with you know four days left five days left yeah. so you know if if you get two two gold star collectors looking to finish your set going at it <laughs> who knows where this thing could go dragon We've frontiers there he is yeah. and a fan favorite see what's interesting about Gold stars is this is the first time where there was a Charizard card in a set and it's not the most valuable and most sought after card. It's number two, which is still good, but like I, I don't know. I I love everything about this Charizard. Also, I did get a signed one from uh, the Dallas event uh, thanks to Leonhart. And again, you know, you got the shiny Charizard with with the red wings in Gold Star format. It's beautiful. Like this is this is the Charizard that you want to collect. I still remember the first time I saw one of these, like, somebody just showed it to me, and I was like, I don't know what this is, but I can tell oh, it's boy. cool, like, and so I, oh, I had to then figure out what gold stars were. Yeah. This was, like, 2009, maybe? Like, it, this was a while ago. What's the pop on these guys, on the Charizard? The pop, and then we gotta <laughs> take a look at the goods that Rev just brought out. Uh, the, oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, the, got the B-roll for you guys. Ooh, the, the, ooh, ooh. the pop here on Dragon Frontiers. Oh, oh my. Charizard, we're so, looking at oh, 87. Uh, Mew, we're looking at 58. 87 Again, for uh, very, very Mew? Low. And 58 for Charizard? 58? 58, 58 for Mew, oh, 58 87 for, for Charizard. 87 for Charizard, alright. Let's see that box again. Yeah, so this is actually from a case, so... Um, well, let me do that camera. So yeah, we cracked a case, like legitimately opened a sealed case of this. Uh, it was over the summer. Some guy had, a, he would go to the card store and he would buy a case of every set that came out and he would complete the sets. Mm -hmm. Like what we're talking about right now, he'd open it up. He'd go, he'd know the owner at the card store. He'd special order him a case or two of each. I think two cases actually. So he'd crack the case. When he completed the set, he would just leave the rest of the boxes sealed so we had an extra case of Dragon Frontiers that we got off him, and we opened it on camera, and it was, it was just like the craziest thing ever. Because like we showed the pictures, but like we didn't really highlight the, the Mew is water type because it's blue, and the Charizard is dark type because it's uh, black. Like they, they 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 did the same thing they did with the Gyarados, where they changed what type the Pokemon was to reflect the color of the shiny form. Mm. All right, we got to the, the last, the X Deoxys. Gold Star cards. These are the uh, the holy grail of the set. <laughs> Let's go. There you go. Let's go, Rayquaza. That Rayquaza is on eBay right now for the first time in like m almost a year, probably. And with like four days left, last time I checked, it was like twenty eight grand. Yeah, like you said, this is the the crown jewel of of Gold Stars. The Rayquaza is yeah. is the number one Gold Star that everyone wants. Mm -hmm. Um. And for whatever reason, Deoxys <clears throat> seems to be the hardest box to find. I don't know, Rev, is, what about your history with finding uh, boxes? Deoxys is probably the most difficult to get. And then, honestly, stuff like, even like Holland Phantoms, where's Holland Phantoms? <laughs> you can never find Holland <laughs> Phantoms. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when I got my Deoxys. Uh, Joe, I think actually, did I get from, no, I didn't get Deoxys from you, Joe. I got a lot of EX boxes from you, I feel like. Um but like Holland Phantoms, I feel like is one of the most difficult to, to find as well. Like EX Team Rocket Returns, um, but like the the ones that aren't as difficult to find are the ones really that don't have like the gold stars in them. So like Ruby Sapphire, Sandstorm, um, Hidden yeah. Legends, like those ones. Even Magma Aqua, like the more the more easier ones to find. Um, yeah, yep. the pop report on these guys. Uh, Rayquaza is at forty six. Again, that's that's the most popular gold star, and it's only at forty six. Uh, Latios is 24. Latias is 20. 24? Yeah. Yeah, wow. And wait, hold on. La Latias 20. is 20? 20, yeah. Oh, that is... So this has got to be the second lowest pop. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. Latias is the Torchic, second lowest... Latias, Latios, uh, Gyarados, are the, Rayquaza are like the bottom five in terms of pop. So here it is, guys. This so, is the Gold Star set. Thank you so much for... 
for uh, chiming in and, and entertaining and educating everyone that's watching this right now. Um, this is awesome. This is beautiful. This is so rare. Um, it's really exciting. The, like part of this is also personal to do this with you guys because it's yeah. like I'm sitting with scholars in in Pokemon card collectibles and and you know get to learn so much about each card and you know I could find out the pop reports I could find out you know information like that and data like that but mm -hmm. the stories and the boxes and and you know all, all this really like fun information makes it more special you know yeah. similar to steve yeah. the, the sale hasn't hit me yet so this is still like <laughs> the coolest thing i own <laughs> how long cool. did you have the set for um i got this set the same time i also got a psa 10 first charizard oh wow and uh i listed did you, them both did you sell that yeah oh you did I, I sold it for at the time record high 80 grand <laughs> and then six weeks later, so I think I think it was six weeks. Logic pays two fifty, and I'm sitting there like an idiot. And I was like, "Oh my god!" All right, guys. Well, appreciate your all all your time. Really do, and um, yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you.